I will probably take less than the 20 minutes I was intending to be given. Um, so feel free to stop me at any point and ask questions. Uh, also, one of the things to keep in mind is that um, the software I'm going to show you today is um, I, I try to maintain it as much as possible. So usually if someone asks me a question, I can, you know, update something or fix bugs within the day. Um, during the course of this class, you definitely have my attention. So like if you do stuff for homework tonight or tomorrow, if you open a GitHub issue, I'll, I'll try to resolve it um, as quickly as possible. Uh, given that there's 85 people in this course or so, then I might not be able to deal with that many, but, you know, hopefully there aren't that many bugs. Uh, okay, so I'll be talking briefly about trajectory planning. So this is where you're going to put your NeuroPixels probe and the angle uh, that you're going to put it in. Um, basically just thinking about how you're going to orient things during your experiment. So a few considerations to keep in mind when you're planning a trajectory. Uh, the first one is that you're going to want to give yourself as much room for error as possible. So what I mean by that is, in my case, I'm trying to record from the visual aspect of the striatum. So the striatum is this big chunk here. The visual striatum is this narrow part right by the ventricle here. Now, if I'm trying to hit this part with the NeuroPixels probe, I could come straight down from the top. If I do that, then this is essentially the window of error that I have. So if I hit it right in the center, that's good, but a little to the left and a little to the right, and I might be in the wrong zone of the striatum, or I might be in the ventricle where I have no spikes at all. So essentially the, the room for error I've got is this red line here. If I make a craniotomy, this is the areas that I can put my probe in. So I can potentially make that easier for myself if instead I come at, a, at an angle. So all I'm doing here is that I'm having the probe um, approach this area um, perpendicular essentially to the main axis of this thing. So in this case, the visual aspect of the striatum kind of lies along this 45 degree angle. If then I have the probe come in at 45 degrees, then I'm essentially maximizing the area I have to make an error. So when you look on the, on the top of the craniotomy, I can put my probe coming in from this angle at any one of these points here, which is longer than one of these points here. Um, so essentially I have more error than, than I would otherwise. So the, the point of this is to say that when you put the probe in, you're probably going to not put it exactly where you think you're going to be. So the more room for error you give yourself, the safer it is. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is which direction you have leeway in. So one of the things is that when you make a craniotomy, sometimes you'll have a blood vessel running through a part that you would tend to put your probe in or sometimes your craniotomy won't be exactly where you think it is, or sometimes you'll just have to move the probe for one reason or another. It's good to keep in mind which directions you can go that'll be you know, more safe than others. So in this case, for example, let's say I'm putting my probe in at this 45 degree angle, I can potentially move this left or right depending on where these structures are. Uh, one of the landmarks that I've got is that on the medial edge of this, there's this like, blood vessel, so if I move the probe all the way over, essentially, to this blood vessel, it looks like I'll still hit my target. Um, so it looks Andy, like... Sorry, I just want to make 100% sure that people don't think that they can move the probe inside the brain. Can you just repeat it one more time? This movement will occur outside the brain. Otherwise, you will snap the probe for sure. That's right. When you put the probe in, the only direction you can go is along the probe axis. Every other direction will break the probe. Okay. Um, so in this case, um, let's say I'm kind of intending to put my probe here, but there's a blood vessel here or something. If I go medial, I have all this extra room, but if I go lateral, there's a pretty decent chance that I'll miss this area altogether. So that's another thing to keep in mind, um, the directions in which you have leeway. The third thing is that, at least in my experience, it's very important to have electrophysiological landmarks. So I think we'll hear a bit in the upcoming days about how you want to align NeuroPixels recordings to the atlas um, in terms of depth. So like you, you know generally where your probe was, but you want to know which area of the probe was in which area of the brain. That's easier to do if you have electrophysiological landmarks. So in this case, for example, the probe passes through the ventricle here. So in the ventricle, I should have no spikes. So if I see an area with no spikes, then that means that that's on, on this part of the probe. Um, so the example that I'm showing here 
is one in which the target zone is the striatum, let's say the whole striatum. Um, but it's bordered by things that I can readily identify. So on the left here, there's this bit of cortex. So it's, it's potentially the endopiriform or, or it's just some other bit of cortex. Um, but uh, empirically, I found that the activity within this part of cortex has a very different type of activity within this part of the striatum. So when you look at the correlation of spikes in this part with spikes in this part, there's a sharp border. So in other words, if you look at correlation from one part of the probe to the other part of the probe, there's a sharp correlation border as you cross this area. Now that's important because there are spikes along this whole thing. So you won't see any breaks and spikes, but you do see a sharp break in the type of activity you see. So that's one of the things you can use to align the probe. Uh, the other thing, as I mentioned, is that the top of the probe here is going through the ventricle. And so that's very obvious because there's just no spikes in it. So one of the things then to keep in mind when you're doing these, uh, when you're planning a trajectory is that if you can give yourself something obvious to align by, it's gonna make your life easier in the future. So those are just some kind of things to keep in mind when you're planning your trajectory. So on to how you would actually plan your trajectory. I'll show you this GUI that I've got. So um, it's this function in part of this repository from our lab. So this is the account on GitHub here, and this will be included when you download that. So the function is called uh, Allen CCF NPX. Um, I think that most of the course people have tried to download it. It doesn't seem like there's any problems, but if you have any problems, let me know, uh, or let Nick know if he's the handler of problems. Um, so this is just a screenshot that I'll show you in a second. A quick note, if you don't have MATLAB, then there is a standalone executable, but I have very rarely in my life met people who don't have MATLAB and are working in neuroscience. So it hasn't been troubleshooted yet. So if you need help with that, let me know. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a practical demonstration now of how you would use this GUI. I'm just gonna pull it up and I'm gonna show you what all the buttons do. So um, the first thing you'll need to do is direct this function to where you keep your Allen CCF atlas. So this is the function that we're gonna call this Allen CCF MPX. And the line that you're gonna to wanna to fill in is uh, this line 22 here. So this is the path at which you have your Allen Atlas. Um, it should be blank, I think, normally, but you want to put your stuff in here. Um, so you can either put this in here so that you can just run this command as is, or you can load in these things ahead of time, and then you can run it like this so that it'll have the Allen Atlas already loaded in, and then it'll pull that when you run the GUI. All right, so when you run that, the GUI that comes up looks like this. So I'll just take you through essentially each one of these steps and I'll show you what this looks like. So at the moment, what we're looking at is a 3D rendering of the brain. We've got this wireframe showing the outline of the whole thing. And then we've got this slice. So the slice is going through the trajectory that you picked for your NeuroPixels probe. And the NeuroPixels probe trajectory is shown here. So the red is the whole trajectory is where you could possibly go with the probe and the blue is the approximate length of the probe. So this is like your actual probe, the blue, and the red is where you could put your probe along that line. Um, so at the moment, just in the, in the default, it puts it right in the center um, and it's showing you that you're going through these areas. So it's starting out in cortex here and then as you go a little bit lower, you're getting into the septum and some other things. All right. So um, some basic keys are shown up here. So this is how you move the probe around. You can move the probe around using the arrow keys. So if I press up, it moves it forward in the brain. If I press back, it moves it backwards in the brain. Left and right, go left and right. Okay, so that's how you move it by translating it in space. You can also change the angles by holding down the shift key and pressing the arrow keys. So in this case, there's two angles that you're gonna set. The first is the probe axis, uh, or sorry, so the first is from, from the midline. So what I mean is if you draw an invisible line down the midline, then it's the angle relative to this. So zero is essentially pointing straight forward 
and minus 90 is pointing to the left and plus 90 is pointing to the right. Um, so this is essentially the angle you'd set your manipulator at. So like if your angle was coming straight from the back, this would be where your manipulator would be, or if you were coming from the side, it would be like this. The other angle you'll set is how far down from the horizontal you are. So the horizontal would be here. At the moment, it's coming straight down, so it's 90 degrees from the horizontal. So this is just the axis at which you'd set your rotation of your manipulator. Um, okay, so all that can be explained very quickly if you just hold the shift key and you press the arrows, then you can play with this angle. So at the moment, if I hold the shift key and I press up and down, you can see I'm wiggling this axis of the probe. So this axis is the one that you'd set your manipulator rotation at. So that's one axis of rotation. The other of axis of rotation is where you'd put your manipulator. So now I'm pressing left and right. So you can see now I'm coming from the back. And then if I rotate it, now you're coming from the front. Okay, so those are the ways that you move the probe around manually. So if you're trying to just see where you can hit your probe, then you can move it around like so. Um, the final thing is that you can change the depth of your probe by holding Alt. So that's uh, shown here, Alt up and down raises and lowers the probe. So as I said, the blue is the length of the probe and the red is kind of the rest of the trajectory. So if I hold Alt, you'll see the probe move down. <clears throat> and now we've got a different set of areas over here that we're going through. Okay, so that's the general idea of how you move the probe around. Now looking at um, this slice and adding in 3D brain areas so you can figure out where you want to go. The slice that we're seeing, we can have either be the regular anatomical slice from the CCF, that's the default, and then you can change this by hitting the S key. So at the moment, it's this volume version. If you hit S, then it so S stands for slice, then it turns into these different color-coded areas. If you hit S again, then it goes away. So this is volume, areas, off. So uh, that's how you manipulate the slices. And then probably the most important feature that you'll use is this 3D brain areas thing. So in this case, let's say I have an area that I want to hit and I want to plot it in 3D and then I want to move my probe around so that I have it go through that area. Um, there are three ways to pick an area based on your favorite kind of hierarchy. So um, first of all, if you just hit the plus key uh, and I should mention that I guess if you don't have a numpad, this is the, also the equals key. Uh, so I'll hit plus here. It'll bring up all of the areas that the Allen Atlas has parsed. So you can pick one of them. Let's pick, I don't know, whatever, the clostrum. Uh, and then it'll draw this in 3D space. So that's one way to do it is hit plus and it brings up everything. You can also hold shift plus. Oops. And that brings up this hierarchy selector. So in this case, you can go through each one of these categories uh, and then it'll show you how the Atlas categorizes these things. And then you'll be able to pick an area. So I just picked some random thing, but it goes down to the subiculum. Uh, we can pick that, uh, which may not be parsed at the moment. Okay, so that was a bad choice, but whatever. Um, okay, so the final thing is that if you hold Alt and then you do plus, you can also search for things. So let's say I wanna search for anything with the name retro in it, then it'll return retrosplenial, retrochiasmatic, um, whatever. So let's say we want to put in the retrosplenial. So then it'll show you the retrosplenial cortex. Okay, so uh, that's how you add things. If you want to remove, then you hit the minus key. So you'll hit minus. It'll bring up all of the things that are currently plotted. You can select all, and then it gets rid of those things. Okay. So um, let's say, for example, we want to have a trajectory which goes through both the motor cortex and a motor related thalamus. So we can hit the um, plus key. Now let's go for alt plus and we'll search for anything with the word motor in it. So we've got primary motor, secondary motor. Let's say we just want to hit primary motor uh, and then we will do this again. So alt plus and let's search for anything that has the word thalamus in it. So this will bring up um, all of the thalamic nuclei. So let's go for the VAVL thalamus, which is there. So let's say that my experiment is going to involve recording from both the cortex and the thalamic area at the same time. Then 
Um, in my experience, I think the easiest way to do this is just do it by eye. So if you if you rotate your probe around until it's going through both of these areas, um, you kind of have to have to play with this in person to get a feel for where these three D things are. But you can see that now the probe is going through this green part here, um, and it's not quite going through this pink part. So we'll just move it slightly forward. Um, so from this trajectory, you can see that this red line is going through both the motor cortex and the VAL thalamus, and then we can adjust the height until our probe is going through both of these things. So you can see it's going to be a little bit of a stretch, but you can do it. So you can double check over here that the top of the probe is going through the motor cortex and the bottom of the probe is hitting the VAL thalamus. Um, so uh, once you play around with it, it kind of gives you a better feel of, of where these things are in space. Um, you can also put it at one view, for example, and optimize your angle this way. So I've just put um, the, the kind of sagittal view of the brain here, uh, not sagittal, that's the other one. Um, and then you you can move the angle independently. So like this, you know, I can I can make it so it hits it hits the biggest chunk of the cortex, and then you can move it from the front and set the other angle. So that's going through the biggest part of this. Um, so at the end of the day, it kind of just takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but once you get used to it, hopefully it's relatively intuitive. So, um, um, so Andy, a few things. First, it'd be great if you could be done in five minutes, if you think you can. Otherwise, we'll, we'll schedule it. Yeah, this. so I'm, I'm basically, I'm basically okay. done. Um, okay, this then is there's a couple of questions. Of One of them is a burning question, which yeah. said, in, in what frame, coordinate frame, the question went away, but what's the framework of the coordinates? Maybe this is somebody who doesn't use rodents who asked it. So what's zero, zero? What's, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, good point. So I didn't explain that. Um, so um, up here, it'll give you a text showing where your probe is going through. So these coordinates are based on approximate bregma as it relates to the Allen CCF. So Allen CCF doesn't give exactly a bregma coordinate. So we kind of guessed this by finding the AP position that looked the closest to bregma. Um, so in this case, 712 means it's 712 um, microns anterior and then 1675 microns medial lateral. Um, and then this final one is the probe axis depth. So this is once you touch the surface of the brain, this is how far down this goes. And so this number is essentially measuring from when the probe intersects the first part of the brain here. That might okay, have so been the question. Three. That might have been actually the question is if you okay. start calculating from when you touch the dura or from when. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so this is pretty much the whole thing. Um, there's a little bit of histology stuff that I, I can show you later when I talk about histology. Um, yep, other than that, it's most it's meant to mostly just be kind of like a plug and play trajectory explorer. So uh, if anything doesn't work or you want me to change anything, let me know and I can, I can especially in the next couple of days, work on it relatively quickly. Okay, so I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. <laughs>